I was at school, and it was between periods. We didn't have cell phones back then, and uh, there was a little booth or a little cutout in the wall where um, the uh, payphone in our school would ring. My mom knew that number, and I think she also knew when uh, my classes started and ended. And so someone said, hey, Wemps, call for you, and mom's on the phone. So I, I went and got that uh, call. My mom said, Hey, Eric, you know, I got these tickets um, for the game, uh, the Olympic game tomorrow night. Um, it may have been a couple nights away. Um, but uh, I said, yeah, yeah, I, I would be very interested in going. It was an unforgettable experience from start to finish. We all got on a bus, and I think it was pretty cheap. <laughs> um, and for some reason, um, my mom fell into some cheap and extra tickets for the ride. And uh, they had a box lunch, and there was a Mateus Rosé bottle of wine in there. I was 15 years old, and I had never really drunk before. And I saved that bottle of wine for the game. And so I was standing up there in the stands with my little bottle of Mateus Rosé, sort of sneaking little, uh, little drinks. Um, I thought I was really partying. The size of the arena and the, the degree to which you could feel the crowd and hear the crowd, it had to have been some sort of advantage for the team. It was fabulous. I remember not being a lot of space among the people. I remember being sort of packed in there. So the Soviets, right, they come on the ice, they got these nice stark red uniforms and the CCCP, the Cyrillic, that was sort of otherworldly in its own. And they were also vaunted, and they played hockey like nobody else in the world. These guys obviously had played together for years and years, and they were a machine. And early in the game, I remember a sequence or something, I looked at my brother like, oh my God, these guys don't come from the same planet as, as, as we do. I thought the Soviets may have been toying with us. It wasn't until the last couple seconds that I thought that the U.S. team was going to pull this out. I do remember Arruzione with his wrist shot. I remember him coming across the middle, getting a clear shot, and I remember that, and I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe that just happened. Um, and the players were just all over him, and we were up there jumping. There was no one in that arena that was sitting down. There was no one that was sitting down. It was like thunder. The energy, I think it could have sustained for nine periods of hockey. It was just people screaming and loving the moment and being so excited that we had done the impossible. And I remember my brothers and I stuck right together and we just couldn't believe what had happened. It always brings a little bit of uh, energy uh, or just, a, just sort of a jolt uh, to me and my brothers when we when the conversation comes around to that. And every time someone commemorates that, it's something that my brothers and I, uh, I, don't, I don't know that it brings us closer, we're already really close, um, but it's something that definitely excites us and animates us. And it's my parents, you know. Sorry, but, you know, my parents could have just gone and left us behind, you know, but they, they sent us up there. Sorry, you know, they sent us up there, and that was just very typical of uh, how, ni how nice they were. They wanted to see us enjoy stuff like that. It was a big boost for me and my brothers, but it was really something that, that I'm thankful to my parents for. In 2000, every sports analyst declared that the Miracle on Ice was the greatest sporting event of the, uh, of the 20th century. That was like, yeah, and we were there.